morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year. What a wonderful opportunity to begin New Year in church. Isn't that just like the neatest thing? We haven't done that too often. We kind of, we kind of roll in after all the, the series and suddenly we say to ourselves, Oh yeah, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. We get to meet and greet the New Year in the name of our Lord today. And so I welcome you all. Here and thank you. Thank you so much for being here this day. This is the second Sunday of Christmas, and so we'll be using the service that we used last week. It may be a little new to some of you. It's kind of a, not an abbreviated form, but it is a little different for the season that we're in. But we will begin as we should. Every Sunday, every day, every morning that we stand, confessing and receiving and being reminded of the forgiveness of a very gracious and loving God, please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the Word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of glory, God of peace. We give you rest and we give the light and reveal the truth to us. We cling to worldly things rather than sharing the gifts of this earth. We trust ourselves above all. Save your people, O oh God. Sustain the rivers and trees that sing your grace. And free us to live boldly in the light and the truth of Jesus our Savior. salvation to the whole world. We are saved. Our sins are washed away, not because of anything we have done, but according to God's mercy in Jesus Christ. Renewed by the Holy Spirit, let us live in hope and joy. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is hymn number 634, verses 1 and 2.
brief introduction to our first reading from the sixth chapter of Numbers, found on page 109 of your pew Bible. Numbers is one of the five books of the Old Testament comprising the Pentateuch. This reading, and specifically, is referred to as the Priestly Blessing. It is a strikingly anthropomorphic blessing that was probably to be delivered at public gatherings at the sanctuary. Uh, that big word refers to simply assigning human characteristics to a non-human, God in this case. And now the reading from the sixth chapter of Numbers, verses 22 through 27. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly Psalm 8. Following page 338 in your hymnal. <clears throat> o Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What are merely more of them that you should be known for them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rules of the world's hands. You have all things under them. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And now a brief introduction to our second reading from the fourth chapter of Galatians, found on page 947 of your Pew Bible. In this letter to the Galatians, Paul refutes the errors of legalism and examines the proper place of grace in the Christian's life. In verse 4, Paul especially emphasizes Jesus' human and Jewish birth seen by him as the enslaved human condition. And now the reading from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the time, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that he might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are His child, God has made you also an heir. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our Gospel lesson. Holy Gospel, according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up, pondered all these things in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, 
which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated.
then, of course, did you know that there's the original name of Jesus was Joshua, meaning God's salvation. The idea of naming a person can carry much weight, or it can be done simply because the name is popular or sounds pleasing to the ear. Once again, why were you given your name, and do you like it? Do you honor it? Perhaps you have a big name around you that you really don't like what people use. I'm going to tell you a secret about my name. My name is Betty, named after, some of you already met the secret, some of you do not. I'm named after my maternal <coughs> grandmother, Betty Mills, who was an exotic dancer <laughs> in Baltimore City back in the 40s. By exotic, I mean exotic with a capital E. That's <laughs> um, how she made money during the Depression. That's how she fed her family. I was named Betty after her, out of honor to her. But my name is spelled now B E T T Y. You know what the E stands for? Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing quite exotic about me at the moment. <laughs> But isn't that just an interesting situation? Name means so much to us. Do we honor names? Do we honor the names of Jesus? Now Elizabeth is also the name of a Hungarian religious mystic. So I guess somewhere between religious mystic and exotic, we find Betty with an A. But today, all kidding aside, all thoughts aside, we focus on one name and we ponder one name. The name that is above all names, Jesus. And I ask you the question, at the name of Jesus, what do you do? How do you respond? <coughs> Little research led me to these facts. In the Holy Scripture, there are 198 names or titles for Jesus. Originally, in the earliest writings of Scripture, the earliest Hebrew, Aramaic writings, Jesus' name was pronounced Yeshoshua, or Joshua. It was not until the Latin translation of the sacred scriptures back in the 4th century that a writing called the Vulgate. And uh, the Vulgate became the official translations of uh, the Hebrew scriptures by the Catholic Church. Did we finally get to the word Yeshua? or Jesus, as our Lord is called today. So even Jesus had his time with his word sounding differently, but always meaning the same. The word, the name Jesus, however, is more to us than just a sequence of vowels and letters, isn't it? The name Jesus itself includes an intrinsic divine power and when the name of Jesus is spoken or displayed, the power of Jesus is called upon. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought about what it meant? Have you ever been in situations where you have truly called upon the name of Jesus, recognizing and hoping for that intrinsic divine power that just the utterance of his name brings? nothing to do with an oath of anger. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, it offers to the listener that within the name of Jesus comes other titles and other duties. Jesus Christ speaks of the anointed and the Messiah. Lord Jesus indicates an equality of God. Jesus as logos or word speaks of the Word of God made his flesh. Jesus, Son of God, Son of Man, Lamb of God, Light of the World, King of the Jews, King of Kings. All ways to explain the name of Jesus in Scripture. All kinds of ways to explain the length, depth, and breadth of the person Jesus, both human and divine. 
by what he is, by what he came for, by what he does. How can we offer his name in any way but with reverence? The deep sense of all. The name of Jesus speaks to us first and foremost, I think, in its future gift of salvation. Salvation for the world, salvation for all humankind. <coughs> A sense of salvation just wrapped in the name of Jesus. You don't have to pick up one theological reading or article. You don't have to have one bite of understanding of Hebrew, Aramaic, Latin. All you have to do is hear the word, Jesus, and utter it, and be calm, and know that you are forgiven at his price. That is why I find it so difficult to accept a secular interpretation that is used in the dictionary, which is that Jesus is simply an other expression of anger, annoyance, pain, <coughs> etc. And yet, does not our world put that in print? We should be uttering the name of Jesus at times of praise, prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, confession, and joy. And I have a confession for you. This week I had a lot of dental work done, which I really hate. I take good care of my teeth, but I have my mother's soft teeth, so what can I say? <coughs> I was sitting in the dentist's office for two hours. I had all kinds of shots going on, and I had the dentist who was a good friend. I said, Betty, 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 you're going to be okay. Betty, I, Betty, Betty, Betty was going to call me. But <laughs> he said, I'm going to numb you up good. I'm going to have to do a lot of work, but you're going to feel rough for a couple days. But we're going we're to save the tooth. Okay, fine. I was frightened. I was unhappy. I was tired. And the only thing that could come to me was the name Jesus. And so I closed my eyes. He has all these neat things on the wall to distract you from your irritation. And I told him, I said, you need one name up there, Gus. He said, what? I said, you need Jesus up there. Now, this is a good Lutheran, a uh, good friend of ours now. We went to church together for many years. And he said, do you really think my Jewish people would enjoy that name? <laughs> and I said, no, but your Luther pastor would. <laughs> and just in closing my eyes and entrusting the intrinsic value of the gift of the name, I was calmed. How do you call upon the name, my friends, which is above all names? That's the question today. It's a good place to start your year. Jesus on your lips. Philippians 2, 5 to 11 holds a key in understanding to the length and depth and breadth of the name of Jesus. And St. Paul tells us this. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient to death, even death on the cross. And therefore God highly exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all names, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. Or and it took me a while to find this next text, this next writing. But I, but I was bound to turn it because it's the thing that runs through my mind at anxious moments. I'm sitting in the dentist chair for two hours. My father um, trusted the, the hymnody of the Lutheran Church and the Episcopal Church. He was Episcopal. And he was an Episcopal choir for most of his youth. He was one, had a wonderful voice. And um, his mother would teach him a lot of his hymnody. And he would teach it to me. And he would sing a lot of hymns, a lot of songs that were always about Jesus. And so you know how parents start tapes in their kids' uh, minds whether they realize or not things play out throughout life? 
I looked because I could not find this particular song. Now that's not a hymn. But it was written by Luther B. Bridgers, who lived 1884 to 1948. And if you Google it, you get more of a, I'm gonna say, almost a Appalachian, Appalachian type of rhythm and song and hymn. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still in all of life's ebbs and flows. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fill my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. And all my life was wrecked with sin and strife, just corn filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings and stirred the slumbering chords again. Feasting on the riches of his grace, resting neath his sheltering rain, always looking on his smiling face. That's why I shout and sing. Though sometimes he leads, the waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, his footprints all the way. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 <coughs> this name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. How about praying the new year, and my friends, using the name of Jesus? To that end, I've given you something. 30 days of praying the names and attributes of God. I challenge you, every day, pick a name. Read a piece of scripture. Embrace the name of God in, this, in these texts. Find God this year, my friends. Embrace God. Embrace our Lord Jesus. It's for you to take home and use. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know. Please stand for our hymn of the day, 620. The same verses, one, two, and three.